And one of the questions I get most often is, uh, I get a lot of questions about how to start and, and what the economics of running a pedal company really look like. Of course, whenever you talk about your income, my business I think is worth a case study and worth uh, exploring further for the benefit of other people and maybe just kind of getting into some of the lessons that I've learned since starting to do this full time. When I first started building pedals and making them for profit, I wasn't charging enough and I'll get into what that is. So when you talk about even pricing, right? How are you gonna price a pedal out? You can kind of figure out what the cost of a pedal is within a, within a certain ballpark. Like most people have a pretty good idea of what it costs to build one pedal. You know, the cost of just that part, the, just the parts in it doesn't reflect the engineering time, the, the skill set, the overhead, etc. And when I first started, I basically wasn't charging for my time. I charge for what it costs for the parts to build the pedal, the shipping, and maybe like a little bit extra. Pretty much every small builder that I know has an additional source of revenue. It's very rare for someone to full-time rely on pedals. And I've done it and I continue to do it, but I think if I were to make the wiser financial choice, I would have much extended the runway of what I had in reserve by keeping another gig going as long as possible. And I'll get into why that is, but yeah, when I first started, wasn't really charging enough. I think I was charging like 60 bucks in the very, very early days. And then and then arbitrarily, I, I picked a number. Uh, I said, okay, like a hundred bucks and then some change so that I'm clearing a hundred bucks. Now I have to make a full-time income based on that hundred dollar sale price. And also the time that it takes to build that. And in the early days before I had adopted SMT assembly, I'm soldering every component by hand. Now I still do enjoy doing that and there are some designs if you keep the parts count low enough, you can cycle those. Time invested in each build is really critical when you're gonna be pricing out and, and realizing the economics of pedal. So I was chugging along for quite a while before I even um, started using QuickBooks, which I really highly recommend. And it broke down you know, kind of what my actual costs were over an extended period of time, which I think is really important to know as well. And I will get into some specific kind of ballpark numbers and some specific um, information. I'm not just, dragging it out. I just think one of the things that I myself had to realize running a small business is that the formula is a lot more complicated than I thought. But there is a there is a given formula that a lot of people uh, say is not a bad starting point, which is if you're gonna calculate the cost of a pedal, it's basically two and a half times the raw cost plus your time is not a bad formula. And at first when someone told me something, there's something real similar to that, I was like, man, that seems like so much, like how do you do it? Well, there is such a thing as economies of scale. And one of the things I realized about my initial price points was that, uh, you know, big manufacturers get a really significant discount on the parts that are inside their pedals. Well, when you're just one guy building them one at a time, the amount of parts that you're buying in any given order are a lot lower than that. You know, you might be built buying parts for 10, 20, 50 pedals at a time if you're doing really good. I had to learn all this from scratch. I'd never run a business before. I definitely had worked for a lot of businesses and seen how a lot of businesses operate, but I never really, like this is probably one of the areas that I think if you're gonna run a business or go out on your own, especially if you wanna start a pedal company, it's really important to get a sense of accounting uh, and get a, get a business head about it. I think that was probably one of my biggest mistakes that I made in that first year that I could have done so much better if I had been paying more attention. Now let's get specifically into some things about the business in the first year that I was in uh, operation, 2021. If we remember back in, in our minds what that looked like, the second or third stimulus checks went out towards the beginning of that year and also tax returns came back with the extra, uh, there was an extra like bonus child tax care credit early. So when I had first started my business, there was a lot of people that were still actively quarantining. I don't think it really led up till the end of that year. And there was a lot of people uh, pl at home playing instruments and doing a lot of studio stuff and buying a lot of equipment. My first year was like the absolute prime time to be making pedals, especially at a good price point because it was kind of both factors. You had, uh, you know, a lot of people being at home playing more and buying a lot more equipment. And also, so that first year is actually my best year in terms of raw numbers, raw sales and profitability. And it was over a thousand pedals that were sold in the first year in 2021. I also learned another important lesson about the pedal industry that people had kind of hinted at and warned me because I had friends that were builders and I was like, well, why don't you do this full time? You obviously have, you know, 
enough success, you know, why, why haven't you been able to take it as your full-time gig? And they would tell me something to the effect of, oh, it's just unstable. And I was like, really? Because as I started to kind of get some momentum, I launched the original Shrew and it blew up. I'm like, oh my goodness, there's so much opportunity here, you know, I'm just going to be like this forever. And that was April and May of the first year, which was really early. And then the summer came and I hadn't thought about, okay, during summer people are out and about, and this is retail fluctuates depending on your industry a lot like this anyway. There's a certain time of the year that's really good. And then there's certain times of the year where it's a lot slower and in pedals, it's very dramatic. Not to say that you can't sell pedals during summer. It's just there's, and I've seen people do it well, but just on the whole, from what I've seen anecdotally consistently so far is that it definitely slows down quite a bit once you get into June through August. And then it starts to slowly pick up a little more in the fall, explodes during the holidays. And ideally what you wanna be doing is kind of again, during tax season, you kind of set it up to float you through the summer and then fall, all the early fall money, you're getting as much as you can to get going through the holidays. Cause if you have anything in stock from Black Friday through the middle of December, you could do, I think last year I did probably like 30% of my business between Black Friday and December 1st for the whole year. If I give you, if I just gave you the number, I said, okay, this is how much I made last year. You'd be like, okay, that's enough to live on and all of that. Yeah, the numbers all work on paper. But when you're talking about paying your overhead, your rent, your utilities, you know, all your expenses, and all of which are going up, especially food cost, I think is the one that's impacting people the most lately. In most people's budgets outside of rent, food is the biggest expense. And for a family, you know, the food sometimes eclipses the cost of the rent per month. A little context for my situation, I live alone, I live in an apartment, so I pay a monthly rent. Uh, I pay electric, I don't pay water, uh, I pay internet, I pay phone, and streaming services. So those are kind of like the basic recurring those don't really change right it's the same block that's every month like most people and then you know food costs will fluctuate and then if you want you know anything extra on top right if you want to get into the pedal business i would encourage you to always follow your passions and do what gets you excited you know it's very fulfilling it's opened a lot of cool doors and i've been able to talk with a lot of artists and you know experience getting to meet some cool people and see some really cool things happen like demo guys and you know, getting to know the heads of other pedal companies. Like there's a lot of side benefits to it. But yeah, so the first year had the most sales just flat and I think probably the highest income. Um, so over a thousand pedals sold in the in between, really between April and the end of that year, which was pretty amazing. And then what started to happen, and I think this was important for me to realize and, ha and kind of have an awareness of is that as the economy shifts, so does the sales flow, the cash flow. So 2022 last year, a little bit of a dip, you know, still had really strong uh, early, early part of the year through tax season was good. Another summer slump and this summer slump was worse than the year before. And uh, that was kind of rough. And then, you know, uh, kind of a little bit milder fall. Okay, we're seeing something different. And then it really, like, like I said, last year during December, that was one of my best months of all time. And it kind of sneaks up on you and you have to be ready to jump, right? But, um, all that to say, you know, these are some of my experiences. This is some of the background and uh, this is some of what I've been having to kind of learn as I go. And it's been a really, like I said, a really challenging and interesting process. And I've grown a lot as a person, as a result of it, it's made me really think about things quite a bit different. Like when I shop at other businesses, it's just like, uh, if you've ever worked in the service industry or, you know, you have a partner or friends that work in the service industry, how much they rely on tips. I didn't know that until I was talking to friends and seeing friends that lived off tips. It's kind of that. I'm hoping that, you know, maybe you get a little bit of a revelation to support these builders because when you're a uh, one man or, you know, one person operation or a very small team, every sale matters. I mean, it's the difference between, you know, knowing if, a bill is going to get paid or the rent's going to get paid on time or you know if i'm going to be able to take my family out for pizza this week or not you know th th it makes it makes a huge difference in these people's lives and i hope that you'd be encouraged to kind of check out and support small businesses i know it's not always the easiest thing when you yourself are on a tight budget and that was me for a long time and i was actively supporting a lot of small builders before i ever got into this and now looking back i wish i had bought even more <laughs> 
So let's let's get into some some kind of hard numbers, and I'll give you a range. One of the things that uh, QuickBooks kicked back to me. I did this uh, last year. I started doing this a little more seriously, trying to get a better picture of like, is my formula still right? You know, I some parts had shifted in cost. Maybe there's a couple things went up, and I was like, man, I used to know exactly what the number was. Let's rerun some numbers and see what it kicks back. And and I also one of my biggest expenses. And I'll just say this, and, and this is pretty universal for anything retail or any kind of small business that's trying to get off the ground. A very substantial portion of all the uh, of all the business's money I put into advertising. Not everybody does that. I've seen other small builders that just go off word of mouth, but it's a very slow progression. So for me to have made the jump from, okay, I was working a day gig in January, by April of that first year, this is all I'm doing and it's enough to live on that meant spending a lot on ads. And so when I tell the next number, this is well, this is in context for that. So about roughly a third of all the money that came in from the business was taxable income. So what that means is that wasn't a business expense or a direct living expense. Two thirds is staying in the business fully, right? Like, I think that's a pretty safe bet. Most people could operate on that and I think it's important to do so because there's a lot of operational costs and marketing. It's all, I'm, I'm, all, I'm rolling all of it in, just kind of painting a broad picture of what it would look like, you know, looking in retrospective, this is when it's working well, right? Two thirds of what's coming in is going to business. A third is coming back to me to use for rent and personal expenses. But the way that that money is weighted, right? Remember how I talked about the seasons? That means that that third is not evenly distributed throughout the year. There's two kind of humps to the business and that's when I'm getting most of that third. And there's about four or five months out of the year where the the business has to essentially keep all the money. And I'm okay with it. I think one of the things that's really helped me grow as a person is realizing that when I'm the sole you know, proprietor, I'm the one who has to make all the calls, I have to be willing to sacrifice in favor of the business often. Um, if you're looking to get into this that, and you're like, I'm gonna make all this money on top. So what, <laughs> and that was even my thought when I first started and I started selling pedals for hundred bucks, I thought, oh my goodness, I have it made. I have the whole world. The world is my oyster. I have it all figured out. And not to say I'm not super grateful for having had those opportunities where, you know, big weeks with tons of sales, realizing that the way that the, the year is weighted in the, in the flow of the income and just how much it takes to really sustain and grow. It was a big wake up call and being able to live lean and put the company first in a lot of ways and living on a lot of prayer, honestly, like, um, you know, as, as fortunate and blessed as I am to have the opportunities I do, there's definitely times where it's like, I, this thing has to work out and it has so far, you know, I just want to put that in there as like, I'm really grateful for the opportunities that I've had and it's been a huge learning experiences, but there's been rough times. There's, it pretty much comes down to each summer, you know, sweating. Okay. When's the next sales coming in? You know, is, is this thing, am, am I, am I done? You know, is, am I still relevant? You know, some of these struggles that, that, that come into your mind at times, it's like, you know what? You've seen it have worked before. You've seen it going before and it's totally going to be okay. It's going to be okay. That first year, thousand pedals, uh, I think the, the average sale price. So this is between dealers, people who buy doubles, whatever. I think it was at like 118. So, you know, you can do the math there. If you're good at math, you know, a third of that came back to me. So the only reason why I can make this video talking about the income is that it's not that crazy of a number yet. And there may come a day where I would be very reluctant to share kind of the back end analytics of the company, right? Because that wouldn't be appropriate. People might, you know, be a little offended or a little sensitive about, you know, what that looks like. Just the opportunity to be able to handle all that income for the first time in my life and take up step up in terms of responsibility to handle a business. I think it was something I wasn't expecting to as profoundly change me as a person as I was that I as initially considered especially after, you know, for most of my adult life, pretty much working for other people. I had never really been on that side of the table. Yeah, so second year, slightly less, I'd say closer to like 800 pedals sold, but the, the average cost per sale went went up quite a bit. 
So, and then this year I've started tracking them a lot more carefully, how many actual units have shipped. And so far this year we're at, I think I just signed like number, serial number 340 so far this year. Is there potential there to make a living at something? Absolutely. You know, it, it's, it's a really cool industry. Like I said, if, if you're a musician, but I would, I would always caution people who are, who are just getting into it or looking at it from the, from the outside to, to, to really consider like, this is a big risk you know, that you're not guaranteed success. I'm still not guaranteed success, right? But I think as, a, as an exercise for personal growth, if I were to suggest to somebody, if somebody came to me, and people do often, they ask me, okay, I'm looking at starting a pedal company, you know, what are the economics of it? What are some things I should know, et cetera. And I usually lead with, I would encur highly encourage anybody that's wanting to get started in this to have a big safety buffer. So have all your, your personal bills covered for at least six months, hopefully a year. So you're not having to worry about even touching the company money at all for personal stuff for at least the first year. If I were to go back in time, I probably would have slowed my growth a little bit and I would have done that. I would have worked full time to cover all my personal expenses and then spent a lot more time building up inventory and growing a little slower. Uh, I think just hammering on ads as much as I have. Marketing is very important. It's a huge part of this job. You can do a lot of content creation organically, reach people, you can use demo people. There's a ton of ways to get the word out.